Welcome to the virtual hall. Thank you for sharing your lunchtime with us. Um, my name's Lorna Crust and I work with Marjorie McClure Special School in South East London. We are a Youth Sport Trust Lead Inclusion School and our remit is to provide leadership and competition opportunities for young people with SEND. And the virtual pool supports our deliverable of providing training and support for schools and teachers. I'm joined as always by Alison Bell, the founder of Swimpix, and she's typed in our details into chat. We've also delivered a variety of training opportunities over the past two years to support the aims of this group. And you can keep up to date and watch previous recordings by joining our closed Facebook group, The Virtual Pool. The resources and recordings are also available on the ASWIM UK website under the training page. Today's meeting, we're going to be looking at the use of music in our lessons. And we're going to be looking at exploring the benefits of using music, of which there are many. We're going to look at different types of music and sounds. And it is worth mentioning very early on in this workshop that you don't need specialist speakers in your pool. I know I'm really lucky. We've got underwater speakers. We've got music surround. Um, Alison uses a portable uh, recording uh, device. You don't need all of that. And we're going to be looking at a variety of music that you can add into your lessons without the, all the technology. And as always, we're going to share some activities that you could use in your lessons. And we also hope that you too will share your ideas because I appreciate that we've got a wealth of knowledge involved in this workshop. Or if you're listening on the recording, please type in any ideas into the Facebook page because this group is all about sharing. I'm now going to hand over to Alison, who's going to be looking at the benefits of music in your lessons. OK, so um, benefits of music and um, just before we go ahead, you can see the um, swim picks card there. If you've got the foundation set of swim picks, there's a number of cards in there um, that have got different ideas for sort of songs um, and sort of games. So that might be beneficial to you. So let's go to the next slide and um, we're going to talk about sort of specifically the benefits of music and all I'm going to start with is wow the benefits and the power of music there's so many so let's start with relaxation type um, music that you can use so putting on smooth music or singing in a soft voice can create and change the mood of a session enhancing relaxation skills many a time have I been teaching um and a swimmer may be not keen to lay on their back. And the minute you start singing in a calm and relaxed voice, um, it distracts them, the sound distracts them, um, and it's such a powerful tool and they start to relax and calm. So it is a really powerful tool to have in your teacher's toolbox. I do remember over the many years I've been teaching, um, teaching in large centres where all of a sudden you've got um, aquafit starting and the music comes on and then you've got these lovely children starting to jig and dance around and they get distracted. So why not put it into our own lessons and get that engagement um, with us? It does add variety to your lessons, enhancing creativity and a fun element which in turn engages the learners. I do have an amazing example to share with you that I did um, for producing this workshop, uh, but I'll share that with, with you a little bit later. Um, singing soundtracks will develop vocabulary, rhythm and confidence, which we all know is the key to learning to swim. Um, so hopefully um, that's kind of sort of outlined why we should use it. So what we're going to do now um, is we are going to list um, some different types of musics and sounds. So if we go to the next slide, that's lovely. So we've got three different sort of ideas or categories that we can look at. So we've got equipment that makes sounds. And why not put them in the pool? As I say, I did this earlier, well, last week, um, and the, the results were actually quite incredible. Um, soundtracks, like different soundtracks, could we use those in the pool? And as a teacher or a pupil, what types of sounds um, could we do? So Lorna is going to um, share a whiteboard with us. <laughs> Lovely. 
Okay, so it's interesting we haven't got many soundtracks, but that's absolutely fine because we appreciate a lot of swimming pools don't have, um, oh. uh, uh, you know, music uh, access to speakers, etc. But we're, we're going to look at. We've Sorry? done barn, barn dances in the water. Barn so, dance, love that. And you're going to love it exactly. Perfect. That's what I've done as well. So, Leslie, I've never used instruments, but yes, I will. Just haven't carried something. Just haven't carried something else. Okay. Well, too much to carry in your bag sort of thing. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Well, I'm going to, hopefully that's given you some ideas. It's interesting, the soundtracks, but we are going to give you some ideas just in case you do have the opportunity to, to use um, some music in your pool. Um, right. Yeah. So if you do use soundtracks, um, and it, it could be um, sort of anything from classical music to actually nursery rhymes. Um, I'm at the moment uh, with my art artistic swimmers, we're using big band music. Um, so there's lots of different types. There's relaxation music, dolphin music, but whatever you're using, um, you do need to make sure that you are covered with licensing. So you do need um, a PPL license. This covers and relates to the music you're playing. Um, the PRS license relates to the center or the venue that you're playing the music at. The company is now joined. There used to be two companies. They're now one company. Um, so if you just Google PPL, um, PPRS, this company will come up. They are actually really helpful. So I have a portable license, which allows me to play um, different music. The only music that you have to be really careful of is Disney music. And when you're working with children, um, sometimes you think, oh, I'll use Frozen or whatever, but that is a separate license. I have to say I have used them. And if you just contact them directly, um, again, they are really helpful. Um, it's best just to get the OK with them if you're going to use music. So just a heads up on that. So I'm going to hand back to Lorna now and we're going to explore some activities that you can um, use music in your lessons. Brilliant. OK, so we're going to have a look at some useful activities. As you know, we always like to give you some ideas and likewise for you to share ideas at the end. You'll have the opportunity. So I mentioned the Bop It as a piece of equipment. Now, if you haven't played Bop It, this is a bit of a vintage um, uh, uh, a piece of equipment you can get very sort of different shapes different um price even because they're really expensive these days but i have um, found them on ebay for about three three pound these vintage ones if you did want to get one but they have different formats and the idea is you have to to do the actions before in time to the music so you've got um the i would first of all show the children my bop it um, piece of equipment I've actually got a physical one on Paul's side and then we talk about the actions related to the bop it and for example you've got your spin it here so we would talk I would talk to the children about different ways of spinning or rotating in the water depending on the level of your child your level of your class you might keep it simple and just do vertical rotations where they're standing up and turning around you might as the swim picks card shows do your horizontal rotations where you're floating floating onto your back on the horizontal uh, axis or even more more difficult skill more challenging skill might be when you call spin it to do a log roll where you're rotating on the longitudinal axis. So that would be spin it. So I talk them through, get them to have a little practice of the different spin it. You might have a child that could do a somersault, which would be fantastic. Uh, the, you've then got pull it. So pull it, I would get the children to move around the pool using that cupped sculling type uh, action with their hands using front paddles. So they get that kinesthetic feel of pulling the water behind them as they travel around the pool so that's pull it twist it twist it's quite an unusual skill isn't it of getting the children to have their feet flat on the floor and then twist their upper bodies so they're looking over their shoulders so they're twisting it for more advanced swimmers you could get them into the tub into this tub position and you could get them just twisting their legs from side to side maintaining this tub position you could actually also always add a noodle behind to support them while they're doing that and finally, well, not finally, you've got a flick it action, which I adapt to kick it. And I get swimmers kicking on their front and the back. They might use a noodle, they might hide onto the, hold onto the side. So they're kicking their legs. And finally, if I call out bop it, we just jump up and down. 
at the end of the, this activity or interspersed in that, I might say the Bopit batteries are wearing out. And we've got to do all the actions at once. I also give swimmers the opportunity to have ownership of the Bopit and they call out the instructions. Maybe take a photograph or use a laminate if you don't want your Bopit to get wet. Sadly, mine's got very wet and it doesn't make the noise because there is a noise that goes with it. Um, and I also supplement my Bopit noise with some electronic music and I actually use a track called Flatbeat by Mr Ozo I think it is but that's a very sort of electronic fun piece of music that links in with this bop if any electronic piece of music is quite fun it's an effective purposeful warm-up so you've got lots of core aquatic skills going in there but made even more fun with the sounds and the music so moving on because this time of year I would also add in some Scottish dancing to my lessons. So I think Anne's just mentioned she's done this in her lessons. That's really exciting. I would talk about Scotland. So I have a laminated flag of Scotland. I would talk about where Scotland is in relation to where we live or where the class live. And we talk about how we'd get to Scotland from where we are at the southeast. So we'd talk about going in an aeroplane and perhaps using our uh, floats, two floats underneath and then kicking all the way to the flag we might talk about the bus the train and do different actions linked to that and then we talk about i'd put these pictures up as you know we're lucky enough for my school to have a powerpoint um, but again laminates would be useful and we have this thing that's called called see look and wonder so you get the students to see what can they see and they look very carefully what do they notice and then they wonder what it is they're doing that's quite a nice discussion thing. So here on this picture, I'd get the students to look at the clothes, the formation, and we talk about uh, the reasoning for this dance, Scottish dancing. I then create a sequence of music first, a sequence of movements, first without the music, and then I add in the music. So I would for a circle, I'd get them in a circle, for example, we circle rotate for eight, back for eight, we might go forward for four counts, back for four counts. I'd then get them with a partner, so they spin round, they might do a do -si do where they, they go round the back of each other. We then might mimic this picture here and create a tunnel, so they go with their partner underneath the tunnel and then uh, turn round and join the back of the line. You could add tubs, these, that tub synchro artistic swimming skill where they perhaps do it with a partner. So there's lots of permutation and variations and you don't need to be a Scottish dancing expert, but the music, the, the, the Scottish dancing jigs just make people smile. So those of you who work in special school will know that being on Paul's side or as a TA waiting to help the students can be quite challenging. It's hot. Every time I ran this lesson at school, I guarantee you the TAs were up on the side doing jigs and smiling. So that's another benefit of music. It makes people smile. So this lesson, my Scottish dancing lesson is great for processing skills, memory, teamwork, partner work, rhythm and counting, as well as a little bit about cultural and, and, and learning about different parts of the country. Linked in with this, as you can see on the slide, I also took Chinese New Year is around the same time. We've just had it this weekend. So I've often had lessons using Chinese music and we talk about the different animals of, um, linked in with uh, the New Year and the celebrations. We might make a Chinese dragon in the pool, for example. So we link up with our noodles and move around the pool. I've done other, other soundtracks that I've used are Frozen. So it's the frozen music. So I've linked it into the weather and I've bought ice cubes into my lesson. I've done musical statues. I might have, you can buy in hobby crafts and shops like that, like snowman. Um, and I've planted them all around the pool and they've got to find the snowman. Or you could number the snowman and move it around. But you could do all that to some sort of frozen music. But again, as Alison said, be wary. It's a Disney uh, film. So the, you know, the licensing might be an issue with that. Other soundtracks I've used are uh, Bob the Builder, where I've collected, got the children to collect the bricks and make houses of a set colour, so it's colour matching. Um, I've linked it in with my uh, Three Little Pigs theme, where they build the houses, different colours for straw, bricks, etc. Um, and I've also another track, Porcelain by Moby, very sort of abstract uh, track, which I 
if you play it, it's really lovely to perhaps incorporate. I've used it with the hungry caterpillar. So when we're sequencing the story of the hungry caterpillar, and I've used that both in the pool and in PE. Excitingly, as many of you know, uh, who've attended previous workshops, we're massive fans of musical hydrotherapy at our school and work closely with liquid vibrations. And we're lucky enough to have underwater speakers. And our music teacher, who was also involved in the training when we got trained for this uh, musical hydrotherapy, and our students are in the process of creating their own soundtrack music sounds to listen to in the water. And it's also important to note that abstract music is really important for children to experience rather than putting on popular music because it develops their, their knowledge and their sort of experience of different types of music in their lesson. Alison's mentioned that she's used big band music and I know that she uses a lot of music within her artistic swimming. So I'm going to hand over to Alison who's going to expand on the equipment that she's used recently. So for ease of... Um filming more than anything I did use some quite good swimmers to do this it was just so that I could get it kind of in one take really um, but this is an example of how you can use this in your session I do believe that music can really enhance um, the rhythm of strokes um, so here's a way to start um, you can see in my hand I've got my phone that's not because I'm on the phone that's because that's where my music is and I've got a little speaker behind me which is bluetooth to my phone um, and what we're doing here is we're sculling in time with the music and I have used um big band music which is what I'm trying to get um the swimmers into um and it's to put in putting on the ritz um but let's just have a look at the video clip So you can see there that um, they were trying to get in time with the music um, and for, for artistic swimming, that is really important. But for any sculling, you need rhythm and, you know, propulsion. Um, so the rhythm of the music really helps. Um, now, this next video clip. So this next video clip I'm going to show you, um, I use a tambourine, which they were more than excited about, um, a whistle and a spoon. Um, so it's a little bit of planning that you need to do, um, but I can honestly say they absolutely loved this. Um, so I want you to watch it first and then I'll explain what happened after we did this. So you can see there's like three different sounds. Um, as I said, I could have done it with um, children that are learning that are less able than the swimmers you've just seen, um, as I said, but it was for filming really, but I know they would have managed that. And it, it and does it matter if they don't get it right? Not really. Um, it's about engaging and having fun and adding something in um, extra. Now from that, and that's all I had planned, that session but what happened is the uh, swimmers decided that they wanted the tambourines and I thought why not so they were in the shallow end and I'm not kidding you they're having a little party down the shallow end there uh, whilst they were waiting for some of the other swimmers to finish they were tapping it they were dancing it built a lot of rapport between them you know and then I kind of said to them right shall we use the tambourines for our next drill um, which I hadn't planned, um, but you can see here, they were so excited. So they were kicking, flutter kick with their arm up and they were shaking the tambourine. 
Um, we also had them doing egg beater. So the, the drill was to go from side flutter kick up to egg beater and then back down. So I know that's a really advanced drill. But do you know what? I got about another four lengths out of them practicing that drill because they all wanted to have a go at the tambourine and I only had two. So we just had to keep doing it um, until they'd all had a go. Um, and lastly, when I went in last night to my session, they're going, have you got the tambourines with you? So how exciting. And I just thought that is just brilliant. And that's all I've really got to say about that as to how engaging bringing a bit of musical equipment into the pool. Um, and these girls that I did this with are age range from about 15 to 17. So if you can engage a 15 to 17 year old with a tambourine, I'm sure we can do it with a younger age group um, just as um, lovely. So I'm going to hand back to um, Lorna. Brilliant. And we're just going to finish off with that last um, category that we looked at, teacher and pupil. How can we make music? And as I said at the beginning, you don't need speakers or music licensing as you have the ability to create music with your voice. Asda and I had a brainstorm in planning this workshop and she's going to type into chat some of our most used songs. But please add to them because I know you've got, as you showed at the beginning of this workshop, you've got loads of songs that you use in your lesson. I think Leslie mentioned or Denise mentioned that Ring a Ring of Roses. So I often start with Swimming Ring a Ring of Roses. And I think it's important as well to recognise songs as a really good way of bookending a lesson. So a familiar song at the beginning, at the end, gives that structure to the lesson. So if you're doing a swim pick storyboard, you might have your song at the beginning, a song at the end, and then the content to the lesson in the middle. So it's very clear for the children or the swimmers when the lesson's starting and finishing. So I know with the younger ones, we might do a hello song, hello, Alison. And at the end, we might go goodbye, Alison, so that they really get that idea of when the lesson's starting and finishing. So I often start my lessons with my younger groups with swimming, ring a ring of roses. And even my reception age children, this is a Marge McClure with special educational needs, come up with an activity. So I give them ownership of what to do. So, for example, you're going to have to suffer my singing. I apologize apologize now so we're going to go ring a ring a rose is a pocket full of poses a tissue a tissue we all blow bubbles we might say we all spin around we all jump up and down we all kick our legs so you can see a whole host of different choreographic skills within that song and at the end of our song we all go into the middle and we shout good morning so the kids love that. Any excuse to shout is always fun, isn't it? So that's an idea of a song that's adapted to cover as many core aquatic skills as you can within a warm up framework, as well as developing some leadership skills, giving the children the voice for them to add in and think of an activity. Another song to share with you are Push and Glides. A, push and glide, a song to, to help with push and glides and waiting turns as well, because songs can be a cue for when to move. So zoom, zoom, zoom. If you don't know it, here we go. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to the moon. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We'll be there very soon. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. And that's where children push off on backs or fronts and do a lovely push and glide. As with any game, as you all know, you would teach the skill first and then put into the game so that there is that feedback and the children know what's expected of them. As I say, if you've got your, any other songs, please type them into chat or if you're watching recording, do share on the Facebook page. So that's our songs. And then finally, I, you all um, been on workshops before, Swimpix is a fantastic product and we've referred to them a lot throughout this workshop. And if you want to learn more about this visual resource to support the audio use of music, please visit aswim.uk. And as Alison mentioned, the song cards are actually in the foundation school pack slide sorry we have got a couple of workshops coming up one next week on autism and one on the 23rd of march and if you're interested in that please go to the asun website and go to the training page okay so i'm going to stop sharing there because it's at this stage of the workshop that we would normally add a slide of what's next at the end of this workshop um, about what's going on with the virtual pool but a bit of an announcement we've we've had a little chat past couple of weeks and I think um, thankfully COVID is 
on the back burner, isn't it? And everyone is back to being super busy. And Swim England and ourselves have noticed a decline in people attending the workshop. So we're super busy too. So we believe that our job is done with a virtual pool. So we have provided many training opportunities which could all be accessed via YouTube and the Facebook group will continue. So please keep in contact. And um, this is the final workshop. So bit of bit of a, a bit of a heads up but um, we will be putting it out on social media too but we think it's time we think our job is done so yes yeah, so thank you for your support over the years and um, yeah the, the, the um, Facebook page is still going to stay open so we'll still share ideas on there and use that as a platform and things so keep that sort of chatty um, but yeah thank you for your time and energy and thank you for coming today <laughs> it's yeah. nice to see some faces <laughs> yeah so thank, thank you. you thank you and Anne, thanks for all your lovely ideas as well <laughs> thank you Lorna and Alison it's they've been really good sessions thank you oh, well, thanks for coming them. yeah okay lovely we'll enjoy your lessons yeah have a good term have a good year and um, we'll see you along the way I'm sure